Hello, hello, and welcome, especially to all those new listeners we got recently from Overcast, I believe. I can happily report that there have been, I don't know, a hundred something subscribers that just found their way to our debating podcast. Hello, hello, welcome to To Debate, our podcast of debate. My name is Dirk, and I like to welcome not only my co host, Sebastian who, as usual, looks very prepared. He's always prepared. I wonder, wonder if I if I managed to catch him at some point being not prepared for our debates. No, hasn't happened yet. And I also like to welcome especially um, something around 100 new subscribers that our statistics say we acquired in the past couple of weeks. Woohoo! I think we have reached uh, 50 episodes published by now, haven't we? Yes, we have. Yes, and that with uh, it, mind blowing. It's like we do that for more than two years, right? Almost two years. We started off in October 2016. And today is August 29th when we are recording this. It's almost two years. Nice. Yeah. And I still disagree with you every single time. That should worry <laughs> us. <laughs> Well, I guess it's the it's the the proof of a long lasting relationship, isn't it? When you disagree but you stick together. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, now, now I'm curious to learn how the master of uh, transitions gets from long lasting relationship and disagreement to the motion of today. Sebastian, tell us what are we about to debate today? You have a point. Uh, usually, <laughs> I go have good transitions, but today, I think I think in a way. In a way, a relationship is a form of art, right? There's no science behind it. <laughs> and you know where I'm getting at. <laughs> Gravity. Yeah. Yes, because our relationship is sometimes also on the street, right? <laughs> well, technically, for those listeners who are not aware, the way this project started, this podcast started, was exactly on the streets of New York. Right? We were walking up towards Central Park, about to have lunch, I don't remember the avenue, but we started about this idea on the street. So yes, this relationship, this podcast relationship started off the streets. And on the streets, what do you see? Graffiti, which some people call art, maybe, or what you will call art. But the motion today, see the transition? See what I did here? Perfect. Graffiti, graffiti is vandalism. This is the motion today. I will be defending that motion. So I will uh, try to show that graffi graffiti is... Uh, vandalism, and you will be against that. Uh, just to make it clear, uh, the decision to be for or against is decided randomly. We do actually roll the dice or flip a coin in this case because a dice has six sides. I wonder what would happen. <laughs> yeah, oh, which... I just I've landed on five. <laughs> five means you're four. Okay, we just need a coin. We're only two debaters. However, that's a good transition also to say that we are seeking to see after two years how we can break the glass ceiling as we said in our email thread of how to try and get even more people to listen to our podcast now if you like it please don't hesitate to share it with your friends with your colleagues with your family really don't don't hesitate uh, even if we don't hear back from you if you don't have any feedback or if you don't vote it doesn't matter but we'd love to have more listeners who may enjoy just as you enjoy this podcast so don't hesitate i usually don't like to make this kind of call to action but you know, once in a while, I think it cannot, it cannot hurt. So if you liked it, don't hesitate to mention it around you. And maybe let's go back to our motion after yes. this little advertising uh, <laughs> segment. <laughs> graffiti is vandalism. I have the pleasure to argue against that because, of course, graffiti is everything but vandalism. And uh, you will have the pleasure to convince our listeners otherwise. And after our debate, we hope that you that you surf to our webpage to debate.eu and uh, leave a vote. Let us know what you think, which arguments uh, convinced you. And maybe also if you if you feel that way, uh, drop us a message to let us know of arguments we could have used, things that would have convinced you of the other side. We're curious to learn. And if you're not connected right now and you're listening offline, you can also just remember very simply the email address, mail at to debate.net, and you can just email us there also. Shall we get started? Let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. Art used to be dictated by the genius that was in you, but in the past, in the medieval ages, 
it was this inner genius was influenced by divine intervention in a way. And the modern era, art became something driven by our inner feelings. And this is why we had this expression, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. However, when we talk about graffiti, I do really wonder if there's anyone at all who would consider graffiti art. Also, I have the following two points in that relation uh, to that aspect. Tagging, so the practice of writing your name in a, in a very impressive position on a wall at the train station, is not an act of art. It's an act of ownership. Genuine street art, art in the street, does not aim to own anything, to say, hey, this is, I've put my name here, I belong here. And the question, therefore, when does graffiti become art, is to me meaningless. Graffiti is always vandalism. By definition, it is committed without permission on someone else's property. It's a very teenage-like display of entitlement and ownership. Anyone who glorifies graffiti needs to answer one question. If your home were tagged during the night without your consent, would you be happy? Or would you instead call a painter, we could call that an art painter if you want, if not even the police? And so, and surprisingly, when you walk around and you see a parking lot or a shopping mall, what do you do when you see graffiti on the walls? Do you really want to walk around in that area or do you want to go around and avoid that area? Because unfortunately, that area is most likely to be also uh, involved with other kinds of crimes. Unsurprisingly, uh, art is done by people of all ages. I don't think that graffiti, this teenage mindset of tagging your name outside is, has anything to do with art and therefore belongs to the category of vandalism. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. It comes uninvited. It may not be to the taste of the property owner what appears on their walls. And yeah, it costs quite a lot of money to remove graffiti from walls. So what would you do? Call it art or call a painter? That was what you were asking. Well, I would argue if, for instance, Banksy would draw a piece of graffiti on your wall, pieces that, that run by the millions, you would be pretty happy and probably you would call an auctionist and somebody who can give you advice how to remove it from the wall in a way that's not damaging, or maybe even leave it there because now your wall became a piece of art instead of just calling a painter. That is number one of my arguments. Yes, you ask uh, if anyone would call graffiti art, as I said, Pieces of graffiti have been sold for millions of dollars by now. So certainly there are some people out there that definitely call it art. And if I walk through the streets of New York, as you said in the introduction, or my hometown, Frankfurt, what I see is every once in a while a piece of graffiti on the wall that's just stunningly beautiful. So even if you define art as something being beautiful, even then there is graffiti out there that is uh, qualifying with that. Now, there are two more reasons why I would refuse to call graffiti vandalism. And that even goes to say, tax or ugly drawings on walls are no vandalism either. And I will extend that more in my second segment. But uh, we have to talk about uh, civil disobedience, like refusing to follow the rules. And we have to talk about political protest and messaging, both of which sometimes are not nice and beautiful to look at but are expressions that are anything but pure vandalism. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. I do think that you're conflating two notions. One notion is graffiti. The other notion is street art. Street art has a way of inviting participation, of inviting people to think. Graffiti is one way. It's aggressive. It, it is displayed on walls that you do not own. Street art, and you mentioned Banksy, I think he's a street artist. In fact, to my point, he invites participation. His humor or his dark humor, his political activism is displayed in his art. And the fact that his art is selling for millions is somewhat of an exception. I don't think there's that many, num that n high number of artists which do sell their street art. So I think it's important to distinguish the two between graffiti, 
which is tagging your name, which is tagging your logo and writing whatever, even swear words, with no messaging whatsoever, with no, no thinking, with no invitation to participation, whether that's active participation in terms of drawing something else around it or even thinking, the thought process. Although I want to shy away from this aspect of our definition, if we even go by the critics, no institution has celebrated graffiti in recent years. Now, I don't want to go by that standard. I do believe, as you said, and as I said initially, that art is also something that people can appreciate. But I don't think that this is something that anyone truly appreciates, apart from the people who actually draw their tags and their names on the walls. The thing is, I think it's a way for teenagers, mostly, or young people, to be rebels, because it's forbidden, because it looks cool. Graffiti is something that one celebrates if one is young enough to do so, when it shows on someone else's property, but never your own. Would you actually graffiti your house if you were a graffiti painter? I doubt so. I really doubt so. Ask where you want to do your graffiti. I'm not against having graffiti on designated walls. Otherwise, everyone could paint whatever they want anywhere. If you want to have your name on any wall, on any institution, on any administrative building? No. It becomes anarchy and paint covering things everywhere. It's ugly and probably even dangerous because of the chemicals being used. So uh, I think this is an important distinction to make between art and graffiti, street art and graffiti, being between having a message uh, which is invites a two-way conversation or multi-way conversation and and it's something which is graffiti, which is a one-way uh, way of imposing your style and your non-message to everyone else. And there's nothing that prevents us from not making graffiti vandalism by having this in designated areas. The thing is, it will defeat its purpose because the reason why graffiti exists is a way to signal rebellion against nothing at all. It's just a teenage reaction. So yes, graffiti is vandalism. <laughs> Next up, Dirk. I think you wiggle yourself out of the argument. So Banksy, you would say, is a street artist, but everything else, not so much. Well, no one actually knows who Banksy is, by the way, and if it's a he, a her, or even a collective. For the sake of this discussion, let's just go with he. That seemed to be the most taken assumption. He's not asking for permission either, and he certainly never draws his art on places that were designated graffiti areas. As you said, putting graffiti on places that are designated to put graffiti there kind of defies the purpose, because the purpose is also to protest. You're protesting a norm. You're protesting a rule. And yes, that's often done by young people. So what? deal with it. They are protesting that you, they, they are forced to comply with something. Just because you don't like it, because you call it illegal, doesn't mean it's the same as vandalism. There are plenty of examples like Banksy. If I walk through the streets of any bigger western city, you see beautiful and not so beautiful graffiti around there and just calling one thing graffiti if it's at uh, licensed places and the other thing vandalism just because it's happening on places that normally are off limits well as i said you wiggle yourself out of the argument another point here maybe also coming to um to address what you were saying about how much i would like to see my property being painted on um without permission yeah of course that's the whole point It's basically an affront, it's basically an attack against me as somebody who insists on a rule set. And uh, I have an example for this. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was on vacation in Singapore. And Singapore, as probably most listeners know, is a pretty, uh, pretty massively surveilled state. So there are cameras everywhere. And for what... Singapore officials call vandalism, you can retrieve a punishment that's pretty harsh. You can receive a beating by a stick um, until your skin breaks. So this is the penalty for that. Guess what? There is no graffiti anywhere in Singapore. You walk in uh, Singapore, you don't see any graffiti on walls except of walls where there's somebody has given license to draw anything on it. Until you find a place where no camera is pointed at. And that happened to me and my wife. We walked through a couple of streets and then we turned around a corner and all of a sudden we found a street where there was graffiti on the wall. 
And we wondered how, how can that happen? And we looked around, we realized there's no way that there's a camera pointing at this wall. So even there is an act of protest. There's an act of Singaporean officials may call it vandalism uh, observable, but I would say somebody was protesting the, the rigor and the rules that happened to be enforced in the state of Singapore. So I call it protest. I call it art. I call it an act of civil disobedience. That's not vandalism. Thank you very much. Final statements. Sebastian, let's hear it. Let me read to you uh, a news clip, which is, which is true from earlier this year. Banksy's artwork was defaced by graffiti vandals. This is literally what happened in the UK earlier this year. And um, it was a, a, a painting that, or street art that he put on, on, uh, on a bridge in somewhere in the UK. And immediately after, you had graffiti vandals tagging their name on top of that, indeed, piece of art, which was trying to make fun, by the way, probably of the local area's call for Brexit to get out of the EU. So there was, I think, a child on a, on a horse with a sword and a colander saying, I don't know, just don't stop raising the bridge, whatever it is. It was a piece of art. And immediately it was defaced. Interestingly enough, the debate was in that little village or town was some people were not happy with even Banksy's art and say it has to be removed like any graffiti. What happened in the end? They protected the mural so that Banksy's art would be protected from vandals and tagging their name. So I think this is my main case here. We talked a lot about Banksy, and this is why I think there's a clear distinction between street art and graffiti, which is what we're talking about, where on one side there is a message, there is an artistic expression, and the other one is an act of pure ownership of something that doesn't belong to you. And I'll close off by saying Banksy's art usually, by the way, is not on administrative buildings. It's usually on either self, self-built facades or random walls, nothing specific. It's not about defacing the local train station or you know the, the the city hall or the parliament building. So if you don't think that graffiti is vandalism, we will give you Dirk's address and you will be able to house all over. Dirk. I kind of think you made my point for me. So one thing is street art, the other one is vandalism, just because people around disagree with the act of one and the act of the other. I wonder how that is about freedom of expression. And you said it, the right of ownership of public surfaces. So uh, another example, in Sofia, there, ha there happened to appear a famous, and it went actually viral, Graffiti 2016, depicting that famous picture of Reagan and uh, I think Gorbachev kissing each other just with Putin and Trump. And it went viral and it was illegal by most standards. So you were not allowed to basically draw that graffiti there. But at least in, in Lithuania, um, it was not illegal to make that kind of statement. Now, that kind of statement in other countries can get you in jail. Maybe not for painting on the wall, but for depicting Putin and Trump. So that goes to say that the definition, what is vandalism and what is art, what is okay and what's not, what is uh, protecting public space and what is taking over the right to live in that public space and also color it if you so please, that is an external distinction that you decide to make. That is what the whole point of graffiti is, to violate that sense of ownership. It's a fight over ownership. You're right about that. So it's protest. Protest, it's art, it's civil disobedience. It's free opinion and free expression. Thank you very much. Please, our listeners, vote with me. No, graffiti is not vandalism. Graffiti is much more than that. So, is vandalism art? Or <laughs> is it vandalism? Or is it art? Vote. Let us know. And keep listening. Stay tuned for the next debate. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sebastian. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.
So it's interesting how we talked a lot about Banksy, and it's interesting because I say this because I did not even have his name in my uh, in my preparation. I had a lot of uh, various uh, aspects, and I, and then we evolved around him mm-hmm. of the collective or whatever. Uh, it's quite interesting. I I knew that you will defy the point that it's art. And so I, I was I was trying to find pl- uh, examples where graffiti was basically very very clearly treated as art in the sense that it was auctioned off that people pay to see it these kind of things and that's where you immediately find Banksy right um, also Banksy seemed to not care about any of these uh, regulations so you see see those pieces appear and they are beautiful I I mean it's much easier if the piece is beautiful right. So if you if you look at it, and at least it's well done and well crafted, and uh, it looks nice. Then then people kind of rally around that. If it's just a statement, then then people feel it's it's more uh, damaging. But in the end, it's paint. You can wash it off. You can paint it off. So I would even say uh, vandalism. Uh, it, I mean, it's not damaging really uh, substantially anything. It's just coloring stuff. And yes, it costs money to remove, but you know what? If I'm protesting and I block a street, then that costs money too. If I'm if I'm writing my opinion and get people to demonstrate or lay down uh, their work, that costs money too. There are plenty of things that uh, cost money when when I act on it in a public space, and that's basically where I was circling around when I when I prepared. It's a good point. Um, anyway, I felt un- I felt uncomfortable with my own point about art definition that's why i started off with it because it was it was the elephant in the room whether to call this art and i wanted to (coughs) excuse me to anticipate it and try to see how to define it in a more in a more rigorous way trying to explain the very very briefly the history of it however i like in truth i do feel uncomfortable if one person considers that something else is art then it becomes art Right. There's no one who owns the definition, mm-hmm. and and I think we go again. This is back to many of our debates actually about how one freedom to be able to express your art goes against the freedom of owning the property of where you, the art is being created. Uh, so this is where I, I was evolving my stance towards my position, where it's fine you can consider it art if you want to, but do it in a way that doesn't infringe on someone else's property or freedom. Uh, but you have a point that one you just mentioned, like if you go on strike. Uh, and you're one of our past debates, you know, and you're the train operator, then I'm probably going to lose, you know, a full day of salary uh, if I'm a you know, regular worker and cannot work from home. So where does the, you know, freedom to strike stop? And where does my freedom to get to work start? Yeah. So I think we're always in these discussions, like in these areas. So I'd, I wanted to avoid another, you know, freedoms debate. And that's why you try to go around it about talking about art. Yeah, and, and I, I think it's... Go ahead. No, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, I was done. I was done. Um, and uh, I, I was, by the way, I was trying to not make that point either, because uh, what I was, what I, what I was saying is, it's clearly a form of protest. It's clearly violating somebody's rights. So it's violating your right to your property in uh, of sorts. But that's kind of the point. It's like uh, basically, uh, graffiti artists don't go into your garden and paint the inside of your property. They paint the outside, the part that's accessible from the streets, and that's uh, kind of taking ownership of the public space, more or less. Even if you're just tagging on, and I'm, I'm with you. Most, I, I doubt that most teenagers even have that deep of thoughts of it. They are not walking around thinking, "Oh, now I'm, I'm committing an act of disobedience by taking ownership of the public space." But that's in reality what they do. So what I, I did not make clear enough, um, to be frank, and I, and I was worried I would make uh, the wrong impression. I worried I did make that wrong impression about the age aspect. What I wanted to emphasize more is experience. Here's the thing. It's not because you create art in five seconds or graffiti that it cannot be qualified as art. And the reason I want to say this is your experience in painting will make something art even in five seconds if you have that experience. And here's the thing. I don't have data to, to back me up, but I suspect graffiti is the work of teenagers or early 20-something. 20, 20 and you have no graffiti artists like I'm not I'm excluding the street artists, but someone tagging your name. I don't think there's anyone you know above 30. And my point here is, is because you're not developing any art in this. It's just writing your name. 
And and I think I did not make my, my point clear enough. And the reason I have, and the experience, the example I have in mind, I don't know if you know this story or if I already shared it before about Picasso. Did I mention this before? No, I'm not sure what Picasso, you mean. Picasso, when he was like, I don't know, 60 or 70 years old, he's in a restaurant having lunch. And I guess it's a habit of his to draw uh, and sketch on a, on a napkin as he's having lunch. Now, a woman in the restaurant notices that he's drawing and rec- has recognized it's Picasso, like the great Picasso. And he's about to go away and about to throw away the napkin. So the, the woman goes to him and says, well, could I have your napkin, please? And Picasso, and Picasso tells tells her, well, sure, it's 20,000 euros or $20,000, whatever the price <laughs> is. And she looks at him and says, but you only took five minutes to draw this. And, and he responds, no, Bandom, I took 60 years to draw this. Yeah. And I like that response to show that it's the accumulation of experience that in most cases makes a piece of something a work of art. So obviously our debate was more about vandalism and rights and graffiti. So I did not have the time to go into this art um, discussion aspect, but this is this was the behind the the scenes thinking around the aspect of age, not the youth being a problem, but experience is. And you can have street artists who probably are 40 year, 40 year old or 50 year old or 60 year old. I don't know. I, I can imagine that it is possible, but I doubt you have a graffiti guy tagging his name or her name beyond the age of 30. And this is not because you're young, it's because you're not trying to create art. Anyway, that was the long po- the long section, the long form of my thinking behind this. I will make sure to include it, by the way. Um, no, you don't have to, but... I yeah, you usually do, as you know. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, by the way, I found it funny, and that is uh, maybe something worth... I, I, I found it funny, the example that you gave about uh, Banksy art being basically tagged and... Uh, and, and defaced. Uh, de- yeah. Defaced. This has so many layers, if you think of it, that it's just beautiful. And the, that people have an argument over this is just mind-blowing. It kind of also, uh, and I think we bro- probably we can both arrive at a point where we both feel right about our line Absolutely. of argument. I look Absolutely. at I look at this and I feel like, yeah, that kind of also makes my point. It's like a, the, if I for a second assume that one one element of Banksy's message also is you cannot stop me from from putting something in front of you that you cannot ignore on public display then basically going there and just writing your tag over this makes the same point plus the next point when people start being angry about this and complain it kind of it's it's just a, a piece of beauty in itself that people get worked out, up over this <laughs> defending a piece of graffiti that they dis- decided that this is supposed to be art over a piece of vandalism as they call it kind of uh, it has a beauty in itself it's a very very uh, i didn't see that uh, that meth- um that thing i saw i saw a couple of pictures where where, where regular graffiti people extended art of uh, of banksy so apparently it also happens that when banksy pieces appear that somebody else kind of uh, starts let's say, completing the sentence in a way. So people kind of draw things around that or, or add something to it.